November 17th, 2018 will mark 25 years since an infamous match between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, but we have to go back more than 70 years before that to understand why one, the Irish Football Association, became two, the IFA and the Football Association of Ireland. The outbreak of the First World War had caused a football league of a then-united Ireland to become regionalised around urban clusters in Dublin and Belfast. When that war ended, the Irish War of Independence and the Irish Civil War followed. Cup competitions remained a whole island affair, but when a Dublin team, Shelburne, had a semi-final game with Glenavon, a town 25 miles from Belfast and a club that was seen as a firm favourite of the Ulster-based IFA, the Irish Football Association decreed that the replay would again be played in Belfast where the original fixture had taken place. Officially, this was because a curfew was in place in Dublin, but an identical one existed in Belfast too. Shelburne understandably refused to play the match and it was forfeited. This affront to them was the straw that broke the camel's back for many of the teams outside of Ulster. Among accusations of financial neglect and favouritism, and on September 2nd, 1921, the Football Association of Ireland was officially ratified. After the split, the national teams of each association would not meet each other for nearly 60 years, coming together in two World Cup qualifiers in 1978 and 1979. The first of these took place in Dublin, and goalkeeper for the Northern Irish team Pat Jennings remembered how the side got a police escort through to Dublin. The security guys had picked us up as soon as we went over the border and took us through to the hotel. In the end, the match passed with little incident, though at the return fixture in Belfast, a stone was thrown from the crowd, striking Republic of Ireland midfielder Jerry Daly. Two further match-ups in World Cup qualifiers followed in the late 1980s, but it is the November 1993 head-to-head that lives in infamy. Northern Ireland's home base, then named Windsor Park, had been reduced to a 10,000 capacity due to much-needed repairs, so the match would be contested before a reduced crowd. The Hume Adams Initiative, a forerunner to the peace process which followed, had begun weeks earlier, yet the atmosphere in the lead up to the game was far from peaceful. Around a month before the match, IRA volunteers posing as salesmen had bombed a fishmonger's on the Shankill Road, a Protestant district of Belfast. Nine people were killed, including two children. In an act of retaliation, shortly before Halloween, members of the Ulster Freedom Fighters entered a bar in Greysteel, County Derry, known to be frequented by the local Catholic population, and opened fire, killing eight people. Discussions about relocating the match to London or Rome were dismissed, and Jack Charlton's island team were flown the 100 miles from Dublin to Belfast due to security concerns around making the journey overland. Their coach from the airport contained members of Britain's special branch in Football Association of Ireland tracksuits, and the FAI decided not to sell any of their small allocation of away tickets to the game. Inside the stadium, anti-Catholic chants could be heard, as well as songs glorifying the recent murder of Catholics at Greysteel. The Irish flag was not flown, nor its anthem sung before the game. The match itself was the final qualifying game before the World Cup in the United States, and one that the Republic of Ireland needed a point from in order to secure their spot. Northern Ireland were already out of the running, but this was a chance to inflict some revenge for their 3-0 loss at Lansdowne Road in Dublin earlier that year. One Republic of Ireland player, Alan McLaughlin, told a journalist years later that, although he had started the game as a substitute, the safest place to be was on the pitch, not sitting by the sidelines. Such was the ferocity of the feeling from the crowd and the ground. In the end, Charlton's team got the point they needed to progress and would go on to beat Italy in a group game at the World Cup courtesy of Ray Houghton's famous goal before eventually going out to the Netherlands. The national associations have met four times since then, twice in European Championship qualifiers in the mid-90s, then a 1999 fixture to raise money for the victims of the harrowing bombing carried out by dissident Irish Republican elements in Omar the previous year. Most recently, Northern Ireland were on the wrong end of a 5-0 drubbing in Dublin in 2011. As the result of a long and complex history, 2018's friendly fixture is likely to be an exciting affair. Thank you.